you ever feel like you ripped off Grantham by making a product review start with a cinematic intro, hit that sub button, because I just did. <laughs> so, hey guys, Drewski here. Today is our, um, I guess, big ol' setup video. Uh, this is the video that will describe all of what goes on within my setup for every video of A-10 gun runs or any video of Little Bird action in Arma 3 or flight sim dog fights in DCS or anything in between. If you ever see me fly in a game in the future or the past, most likely I was using this setup. Flight sims are an interesting breed. I feel like flight sims are one of the hardest sort of genres to get into. They have the largest learning curve by far, as well as to really get into them and to really feel the full strength of the immersion and the, the, the simulation. You really have to start investing in some good peripherals to help assist you get to that feeling. I've been flying for years. I've been flying way back in Arma 2. I used to do helicopter piloting for about two years straight in Arma 2. Uh, whenever I got to Arma 3, I started to do a lot of A-10 and a lot of uh, ground strike aircraft and helicopters. And then now I've also started to learn DCS. I started about last year in December. So I've had just under a year in experience in DCS flying uh, planes like the F-14, the F-18, F-16, uh, the Su-33, the Su-25. So I've had a lot of experience over the past, I would say, six to seven years on flying with keyboard and mouse, flying with uh, beginner joysticks, flying with intermediate joysticks, and then upgrading to what now is a very, uh, I would say, professional flight setup. In 2014, I was still living with my parents at the time, and my mom and dad gifted me for Christmas an X-52. This was a SciTech, it was about a hundred $60 at the time. Now it's about three times that because of COVID and Microsoft Flight Sim uh, becoming a thing in the same year. And I've used the X-52 for a long time now. It's been in a lot of my Arma Ops, been in a lot of Elite Dangerous gameplays and all that sort of stuff. And I definitely have an appreciation for this stick. I think it was the best beginner stick I really could have gotten. But over the experience of doing uh, Arma 3 A-10 gun run ops and getting into DCS, having Ralphie teach me the F-18, I realized very quickly that I was limited by my controls, by my peripheral system uh, to, to play DCS. And so I wanted to um, get an upgrade. And so for the last few months, ever since I started playing DCS, I was looking around and trying to find what would be the best for me. A well-rounded setup that could, you know, very well adapt to different planes and different games. And I wanted something that was just an upgrade. I love my old X-52, but I, I think it was time to really get a little bit more professional and higher end with this setup. And so when June or July rolled around, I started to go online and look up all the different HOTAS setups that were possible. There was Thrustmaster, SciTech, Logitech, there was CH product. There's a lot of different companies that make throttles and joysticks, especially startup companies in 2020 because of the huge demand for flight stick setups because of games coming out like Microsoft Flight Sim, as well as people being quarantined, stuck in their houses, getting an interest in flight sims. So, I mean, gaming has gone up by an average of like 30% this year in terms of total sales. So, you know, joysticks are pretty hard to find right now, but there's more and more companies popping up everywhere around the block. My buddy Ralphie suggested a company that I'd never heard of before called Verpal, and not purple, but Verpal with, with a V in V-I-R-P-I-L. The guys and gals at Verpal definitely specialize in making uh, higher end peripherals for the flight sim market. And therefore, I don't think these peripherals are affected by the pricing jump that we've seen from the lower end models. So right now, uh, these are still at the same price as they were, I think, six months ago compared to the beginner joysticks and the lower and intermediate end joysticks that are probably inflated by about two to three times on average. Ralphie suggests the website. I went and checked it out and I it was immediately attracted to some of the products they had. I really like the look of the products, the aesthetic, and that's kind of one of the most important things for me, unfortunately. I really like just the way the products look. Like the gray SciTech X52, get that out of here. I want the black one for 400 more bucks or something. But I just really liked the look of of these things. They looked very high quality. They looked professional. I was very interested. So I reached 
reached out to one of the guys at Verpal and I said, hey, I'm a YouTuber. I make a lot of flight sim videos and, and do a lot of stuff in realistic shooters that have to do with flight sims. I have all these different videos, A10 videos, Arma 3, DCS, all this stuff that I use uh, a joystick and throttle in and I would like an upgrade. Would you want to send some free stuff my way and maybe I can make a video out of it? We call it a deal? It's kind of crazy because this stuff never used to work, but it, suddenly it does. The guys at Verpal sent me the whole package. Uh, they sent me a mongoose throttle, a mongoose base, an extended joystick, and the joystick itself. They sent me the rudder pedals with even the helicopter rudder set and stuff. They sent me all the frames, which are super high quality. Uh, they set me up. I was very surprised by the amount of stuff that they sent because my 13 year old self would be shitting his pants if he knew that 22 year old Drewski had a setup like this. The unboxing and setup process probably took around, um, I don't know, maybe maybe like an hour of time uh, getting all the stuff out of the boxes, trying to figure out, I, I never really looked at any instructions. I kind of just put it all together. It was well boxed and everything was packaged in very uh, good packaging. I unboxed it all. Um, I kind of figured out which cords go where and it was actually a pretty simple setup. The framing to the desk was a little bit complicated because I don't have a big desk and I had to kind of figure out a new way to set up my desk setup to make it work. My desk just isn't big enough so I actually set my throttle just flat down on the top of my computer which actually works pretty well and then my joystick is um, at a 45 degree angle coming off the right side of my desk usually when I'm flying. So it's actually kind of interesting. It's an angled foregrip. So when I when I want to nose down, I actually nose 45 degrees to the right. But there's a lot of weird anatomy things that have to do with that. If, if you ever watch like Travis Haley talk about how to shoot a handgun, he'll describe how you actually shouldn't shoot perfectly straight up, but you should kind of tilt to the side a little bit if you're going one handed. That's sort of a similar situation to this. Real life fighter pilots have a slight slightly twisted joystick and this just worked for me, slightly twisting it and angling it off to the right. Um, kind of made it work a little bit easier. Immediately as I hopped into DCS to try this setup, wow. Okay. It's definitely a lot easier to give little small feedbacks. Oh, that was perfect. First try. First try. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was good. Think rate too high. Woo! First try! <laughs> Without the HUD even set correctly, too. Oh, nice. I filmed that. That was a solid three wire, man. <laughs> what? That was a three? No way. Uh, first off, the joystick itself being able to have such a long axis of movement, I can really like shove this thing forwards and backwards and left and right by about a foot in each direction, uh, which is much more distance than I used to get on the X-52 SciTech. That thing was maybe five inches forwards and back and left and right. So having a large extension to that really does help you have a larger area for small, precise movements. Think of having a high sensitivity mouse on a small mouse pad versus a low sensitivity mouse on a larger mouse pad. Sort of the same sort of thing there, where it's just easier to make those fine adjustments when you're moving in a larger area. The second thing I notice is the amount of buttons. Like the joystick itself has, I don't even know how many hats, like five or something. Has one in the center, one on the top left, one, the, it's an eight, eight, eight direction D-pad in the left side there. That circle thing is a D-pad. It's got a like a three-way direction D-pad on the right side. Oh my, it's just nuts. I, I can't describe how uh, pleased I was to have that many controls and that many D-pads on the throttle, or sorry, the, the joystick. If you ever have flown the A10 and DCS, you know exactly what I mean when there are many different reasons to have about four hats on your joystick. Basically, the A10 requires you to have like about three to four D-pads on your joystick or throttle, and to have those not be on the keyboard and not have to reach from my joystick to my keyboard to control my targeting pod when I'm, you know, aiming and firing a Maverick missile or uh, popping off chaff by having to 
do a special control hotkey on my keyboard. It's just very, very nice to have everything in your hands. Um, for DCS, this is the biggest improvement I ever could have made. I'm, it, this is, it's just huge. When I received this stuff too, I was struck by how solid the frames were. I mean, these are solid metal frames that seem to be laser cut. Um, they were very, very well put together and every part that I needed to manually kind of build myself was very easy and fit perfectly in between other parts. And so I was able to tell immediately, oh dang, okay, this is a high quality product. I don't wanna, you know, I, I, I don't think I can accidentally break this product. The joystick itself is mostly made up of plastic, but it's a very hardy plastic. It's not like a cheap Chinese plastic. And the controls are very, very stiff and clicky and responsive and every single button on the joystick is just extremely, uh, I don't know how to describe it, extremely smooth. There is a weird kind of roughness to the trigger that I felt. Um, I, I would describe the trigger as like almost dusty, like there's a grainy feeling to it, which I kind of, that's the one complaint I literally have about this entire setup. Okay, so I've got my microphone right here so that it can hear the sound that the trigger makes. Basically, it's just hard to tell when you actually click the very bottom of the trigger. If you're pulling this, I kind of just pull it really quickly because I don't want to get confused by the clicks that are in the middle on the way to the last click because if you get confused, you're not going to pull the trigger all the way down. So I just I just kind of slam this trigger all the way down. It's like a two pound trigger probably. And comparing this to an Xbox controller trigger. It's literally silent. It doesn't. It doesn't make a. It doesn't make a sound at all. I need to ask some other people that have this stick if it's grainy for them as well. But I think it's. I think that's factory made. I think that's not like a issue with my stick. I think that's just a weird preference that I have after using Xbox controllers for a long time. I just prefer a trigger that is really smooth and almost light. Um, and this one is definitely not that. But all the other buttons and everything else, the paddle switches, there's there's pinky switches, which I literally found yesterday after flying this thing for a month. I never found it, I'm so sorry. There's a button on the throttle that I didn't find until I was filming the background footage for this video. That's just how many controls are on these joysticks and throttles, it is insane. And let's talk about the throttle setup. It's got these beautiful glowing LED switches, these buttons on it. Uh, there's there's six of them, two rows of three. There's also two-way switches down below that and red switches for whatever you want, your gears, your flaps, all that you really need is here. There's even circular knobs for your two radio channels, which, oh my gosh, it's the most like useful thing. It doesn't sound useful, but trust me, you eventually start to use all these knobs and buttons and you eventually forget about your keyboard altogether and it's awesome. Like I started uh, binding F10, my map key in DCS, to a button on the throttle. It, it's so good, it is stupid. Now when I'm flying in DCS, I don't take my hands off the controls at all. All of my buttons are mapped, uh, except for, let's say, if I want to move my external camera, I would have to do that with my mouse, unfortunately, like a peasant. The smoothness of the products themselves is insane, too. The throttle just has, just like I described earlier, how the Xbox One trigger is super, super smooth, and I love it a lot. That applies to the throttle in this. When you push that throttle forwards or backwards, it is the most perfectly, uh, I would say, perfect amount of friction on the throttle to not allow you to accidentally throw the thing anywhere, but also the perfect amount of smoothness to make it very easy to just gently pull the stick or the throttle back and forth. It's super easy with just a flick of a button to separate the throttles. The left throttle is slightly less friction than the right one once you separate them, but also it's it's like a 10% difference. I'm doing it right now as I'm talking. It, it is a very light difference, but I still did notice that. Not even really a complaint whatsoever. I think it's just part of the design. There's even mode switches which change the color of the lights on it. Like, oh, oh, it's RGB. Woo, that's all I needed. I mean, this stuff is just, Beautiful. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm very uh, surprised by the build quality and the smoothness of these products. 
Um, I really don't think I'll ever upgrade again my joystick and throttle. I think this is feature-proof for 40 years. If they last that long, we'll have to see. Even this little like flaps slider that's near the throttle I use for wing sweep or on the F-15 and F-16 I use it for radar elevation. There's stuff like that that you don't really realize you're going to map until you get in the game you actually figure out, oh, I don't need to have this on my keyboard anymore. Or maybe there's an axis here and I could use that for my radar elevation or maybe my scan up and scan down or maybe my scan left and right. Talking about Xbox controllers as well, on the throttle, there's actually an Xbox controllers uh, joystick. Like there's one that clicks the same way. It feels the exact same. And when you move it around, it's the same exact movement. I would think that that would be like copyrighted or something, or I, I don't know what the legalities of that, but maybe they bought it from Microsoft and used it in this, or maybe Microsoft bought it from somebody else. I don't know. It's the same exact feeling joystick. It's kind of nuts. It's super useful for moving your little uh, uh, pipper around in radar screens and locking onto targets or locking onto SAM sites with the SU-25T Frog. It is just, oh wow, I didn't even realize that I needed a joystick on top of my joystick. What? There are one, two, three, four, five, uh, I think that's it, I think, yeah, five four-way hats on the throttle, and one of them is an eight-way. They also sent me a rudder pedal, which is uh, something I haven't used in a long time. And if you've used a rudder pedal before for flight sims or Arma or anything like that, you'll realize very quickly that your brain is not accustomed to using its feet to control a video game. You'll start sliding off to one direction with your rudder of your helicopter or your nose wheel steering will start gliding one way and you will just ignore the fact that you have to control it and fix it with your feet. Your feet just stop working. One of my friends, I told him, I was like, make sure, like, really, uh, really focus on the idea of I need to use my feet right now if my plane starts going one direction. He didn't believe me. Then immediately after, he started going off in one direction and couldn't control it. Your rudders will act as steering wheels. So yep. if you rudder left and right, you should be able to see yourself wobble like me right now. If you haven't used rudder pedals in a while, you will your brain you, will you not like. You push left to go left. Yeah. Push left to go left. Yeah. Yeah, but your brain it's, it's won't backwards. like. You can think that, but your brain won't register it if you're rolling into some grass and you need to do a right turn really quick. You'll want to grab your joystick and turn, but you can't. Fifty or twenty-five or something, and then start ruddering right. Don't ever don't like pedal right, to the metal. My brain said yep. no. See, <laughs> see. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't um, pedal to the metal your rudder just rudder tap. pedals are very important especially when it comes to low level or low speed flying in helicopters uh, landing and carrier landings on uh, aircraft and having to use those very fine adjustments with the rudder pedals and just like before how I described that the joystick has a larger range of motion and basically it's like a mouse with a larger mouse pad and a lower sensitivity that is very similar when it comes to rudder pedals versus a twist joystick a twist joystick, it's a very small uh, kind of control. It's very its very little. You might tilt to one side and accidentally be using your rudder and not even notice it. Having actual rudder pedals, once you get used to them, is a much larger axis for uh, mistakes to happen in. And so when you do accidentally make a mistake, it's very easily adjustable and, and fixable uh, with those rudder pedals. And I, that's what I really do like about them. You can very gradually increase your rudder strength to one side or the other um, compared to kind of the joystick twist setup, which is more of a like zero to 100 sort of feel. Now, one super common question on my streams whenever I stream DCS, it, it's so common that we've added a command just for it is if I'm playing virtual reality when I'm flying in these flight sims. Because people that don't know what head tracking is, they'll see this footage and they'll go, hey, he's moving his head around and it looks like a, it looks like he's actually moving his head around. How is he still looking at the screen if he's moving his head around? Well, it's not VR, it's track IR. It's a little sensor that goes on top of your monitor. There's a little clip that clips onto your helmet, your helmet, your headset. I'm not wearing a helmet. I guess I can mill some really hard if I want to. Three little lights will illuminate from the clip that's clipped onto your headset, and the sensor will understand what those three little dots are, and it will understand where your head is in a three-dimensional space. So you can turn around, you can look up and down, left and right, um, but what's nice about this is that it's customizable, and so you can adjust the multiplier for how much your head turns in-game compared to how much it turns 
patterns in real life. And so I don't have to look backwards in real life if I want to look backwards in the game. I only look about 20 degrees to the left and in game my head will turn all the way backwards. And it's very nice because then you're not shoving your head left and right. You're only moving your head slightly and it's very, very natural. It's kind of weirdly natural. I remember first trying track IR back in maybe 2015 and it was very odd, um, but immediately instinctive. Now, honestly, to give a review of track IR, I'm very surprised I haven't broken this thing yet. It's made of plastic. It's like $180 for the whole package or maybe $200 for the whole package. Um, it works great for what it is. It's a, it's just track IR. It's a head tracker. It's infrared. But yeah, this thing is plastic. I mean, I could literally tear this thing in half in half a second if I wanted to. It is just so cheaply made. Uh, I hope that track IR comes out maybe with a track IR 6 or something, maybe with a higher resolution sensor and maybe some quicker delays or something, uh, but also a much higher build quality and structural support for this clip on the headset because I just feel like it's gonna snap in half at any point. But yeah, I think that's all the products that I'm using in my day-to-day -day flying in DCS or Arma or Elite Dangerous or any other flight games I really play. That is what my current setup is. Now, I'd still suggest if you're going for a cheaper setup, the SciTech X52 was a great stick. It lasted me a long time. I've definitely upgraded from that. I probably won't be using it too much more and maybe we'll be gifting it to a friend sometime soon. But if you were interested in the setup I'm using currently, that's the one I'm using currently. I'm very pleased with this setup. It works extremely well. And for anybody that's willing to, you know, get into higher quality flight sim equipment, I definitely would suggest the stuff I mentioned in this video today. All the links for everything I mentioned in this video is in the description down below. Check it out. There's all the stuff down there, all Amazon links or Verbal links and stuff. Um, yeah. Definitely enjoyed making the video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Squad video tomorrow, maybe? Eh? Capiche? Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow.